It's the American Revolutionary War. A rider on horseback sets out on an all-night ride to warn the militia of nearby towns that the British were coming. I'm, of course, talking about the ride of Paul Revere, right? Nope. I'm talking about the ride of Sybil Luddington. Learn more about Sybil Luddington and her role in the Revolutionary War on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by Audible.com. My audiobook recommendation today is The British Are Coming, The War for America, Lexington to Princeton, 1775 to 1777 by Rick Atkinson. Pulitzer Prize-winning author Rick Atkinson turns his attention to the Revolutionary War, and in the initial volume of the Revolution Trilogy, he recounts the first 21 months of America's violent war for independence. From the battles at Lexington and Concord in the spring of 1775, to those at Trenton and Princeton in the winter of 1777, America's militiamen and the ragged Continental Army take on the world's most formidable fighting force. It's a gripping saga alive with astonishing characters, Henry Knox, Nathaniel Green, Benjamin Franklin, and of course, George Washington. The story is also told from the British perspective, making the moral conflict between the Redcoats and the Rebels all the more compelling. You can get a free one-month trial to Audible and two free audiobooks by going to audibletrial.com slash everything everywhere, or by clicking on the link in the show notes. The story of Sybil Luddington was completely forgotten to history for over a 100 years. She was born in 1760 in Fredericksburg, New York. She was the oldest of 12 children born to Abigail Knowles and Henry Luddington. Her father was a mill owner and a notable landowner in the area. In addition to his commercial ventures, Henry Luddington also served in the military. He was a veteran of the Seven Years' War, where he achieved the rank of captain. In the Revolutionary War, he was promoted to colonel and was appointed as an aide-de-camp to General Washington, and he was responsible for the largest spy network in the war. After he died, in his will, the land on which his mill was located became the basis of the town of Luddingtonville, New York, which still exists today. I bring this up only to demonstrate that Sybil Luddington grew up in a fiercely patriotic family. When the Revolutionary War began, Henry Luddington volunteered to lead the local militia. As a result, Sybil and her family had to move from place to place as camp followers with the militia group. Prior to her famous ride, she showed bravery in the face of hostile forces. The American colonists were firmly divided between patriots, who wished for independence, and loyalists, who wanted to remain part of Britain. One of the local loyalists was named Ichabar Prosser, and he gathered a mob of 50 loyalists to come and capture her father one night. Sybil organized her siblings to light candles and put them around the house, and then to march outside like they were soldiers. The mob couldn't see that clearly in the dark and thought that the house was guarded by military men and went away. The night in question that gave Sybil a place in history was on April 26, 1777. Sybil had just turned 16 years old. On the evening in question, a rider came to their home to tell her father that the British had attacked and burned the town of Danbury, Connecticut. The Ludington House was located just south of Connecticut, along the coast from Long Island. British General William Tyron had come to destroy the arms and ammunition stockpiles with over 2,000 men. Colonel Ludington had to assemble the 400 militiamen in the county to defend themselves from the British. The problem was, the militia had been disbanded for the winter and hadn't yet reassembled. The record isn't clear on what happened next. Either Sybil volunteered or her father asked her, but either way, Sybil set out to warn the residents of nearby towns and to assemble the militia. She supposedly grabbed a stick and set out with her horse at 9 p.m. With her stick, she prodded the horse and used it to knock on the doors of all the houses she stopped at. All evening, she rode around Putnam County, warning the citizens and calling the militia to assemble. All night long, she called out, The British are burning Danbury. Through the darkness of night, she rode 40 miles, or 64 kilometers. She took a circular route through the county, visiting the towns of Carmel, Mayopac, Kent Cliffs, and Farmer's Mill, before returning home. Her ride wasn't just long, it was dangerous. Not only were there loyalists in the region, but there were British troops and a local group of outlaws known as Skinners. Plus, it rained that night, and she had to do most of the ride soaking wet. When she got back home in the morning, she was exhausted and soaked, but she had done her job. The militia was assembled, and they were able to drive General Tyron back to Long Island Sound. Sybil was congratulated by her neighbors, and supposedly by George Washington himself. Just as a point of comparison, Sybil's ride was three times longer than Paul Revere's, she did it in the rain, and she did it during the war when there were actual enemies about. 
Paul Revere's ride was done just before the war started, and there wasn't any danger from the British yet. Sybil Ludington's ride was mostly forgotten after the war. Her story wasn't put into print until the year 1880, 103 years after the ride took place. A local historian named Martha Lamb wrote her story in a book about the local history of the area. There was debate amongst historians as to the historical accuracy of the story. It's believed that the story is generally true, but parts of it might be fictional. The primary documentation comes from a memoir written by Henry Ludington's grandchildren which tells the story. In the years since the story was published, Sybil Ludington has been lionized in several different forms. In 1961, a bronze statue to her was erected in Carmel, New York. In 1975, she was the subject of a commemorative stamp in the lead-up to the Bicentennial. The Sybil Ludington 50K run is held every year in Carmel, which roughly follows the route she supposedly took. In 1993, composer Ludmilla Uleha wrote a chamber opera titled Sybil of the American Revolution. And best of all, in 1940, a take on the classic poem Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was written by Burton Bradley. And it reads, quote, Listen, my children, and you will hear of a lovely feminine Paul Revere, who rode an equally famous ride through a different part of the countryside, where Sybil Ludington's name recalls a ride as daring as that of Paul's. The associate producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is Thor Thompson. If you'd like to support the show, please donate over at Patreon.com. There is content only available to supporters, merchandise, and even opportunities for a show producer credit. If you know someone you think would enjoy the show, please share it with them. Also remember, if you leave a five-star review, I'll read your review on the show.